The Steam Deck is my favorite purchase of the last few years. And that's because it did something that I never thought would be possible. It made me a gamer again. Now, if you're the kind of person that's on the fence and haven't been able to find the right system that lets you game as an adult or on the go, then watch the rest of this video because I was just like you on the fence. I'm going to tell you the difference that left these collecting dust and this thing racking up over 100 hours of use in just a couple of months. One, it's portable and powerful, but it's not pocketable. This is an important distinction. I often see kids at restaurants toting around a Nintendo Switch in various forms, some with the smaller light, some with just the screen and a wireless controller. I think that if that is your ultimate goal, then the Switch is a better option. I don't feel like it is any more or less durable per se, but just because the Steam Deck is larger, heavier, and just doesn't do as well in these situations. Size is not always a bug, but sometimes it's a feature, comfortable because your wrist can stay straight and support the weight properly. I noticed that when playing on the couch or in bed, even though the Steam Deck is larger, wider, and heavier, it hurt my hands and wrists far less than the Nintendo Switch. I ultimately found it's because Nintendo Switch being smaller while you're playing it above your stomach laying down, you have to angle your wrists inward. This creates an uncomfortable load on your wrists, supporting any weight for extended periods. The Steam Deck allows that angle to stay straight, making it much more comfortable for hours. It would start to hurt my hands. Then let's not even mention the game selection. The only games you could buy for Nintendo Switch were some premium Nintendo releases like Zelda or Super Smash Brothers. But if you wanted to play any games that a PlayStation or Xbox gamer, what I had been for a very long time you kind of had to wait till years later the witcher 3 came out four or five years later and instead of being able to buy it on steam for like 20 dollars you had to pay full 60 to 70 dollars price for a game that's that old for a downgraded graphical version of it disappointed i just couldn't stomach myself to rebuy a lot of the games i already had and i could never play the games that i really wanted to on it and it just wasn't comfortable for long periods of time. It is still a fantastic system, and there is some people that are better off with one of these, but for me, the current titles, emulation, windows for work, or playing games not supported by Steam Anti-Cheat. That means that there are a few instances where the Steam Deck, Steam OS, just won't get it done. The biggest title for me was Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty. As you can see, you can install full windows on this thing, Onto the SD card slot. I have a 512 gigabyte SD card in here, and that holds everything I need. All of the other games that require Windows anti-cheat, and best of all, I can run my favorite drone racing simulator. This is the Velocidrone drone simulator that runs on Windows on the Steam Deck. Windows is so easy to install. There's several videos that teach you how to do it in just a few minutes. And then you can run games like this. This $20 drone simulator is what nearly every drone racer in the world uses to practice. Today's video is brought to you by Major League Drone Racing, the future of live sports entertainment. Drone racing turns flying drones into a competitive sport. Major League Drone Racing. Now, a lot of drone racers out there can't necessarily afford to upgrade or purchase a new gaming PC, but they may be able to afford $400. Similarly, if you just need a basic PC in order to be able to do homework, you could use this along with a keyboard and monitor. I have a cheap setup that I got from Five Below, and now I can do all the gaming stuff that I would need. Plus, I have a computer desktop solution that's also portable. You get where I'm going with this, guys? Now, Steam sells a dock, but I recommend this cheap one, Dock Tech. It's a lot cheaper. It has three USB ports an HDMI to go to your monitor. Watch out, dog. Speaking of monitors, a cheap dock allows you to go from the screen's native 60 hertz all the way up to 100 hertz, meaning that for many games, you can get 100 FPS. This was key because I like to also use this as a portable training tool for my drone racing hobby. Playing simulators like Velocidrone, 
I can race on the go for such a low price. You know, not every drone racer can afford a $2,000 gaming PC, but for as little as $400 and a monitor that you're probably going to need for work or school anyway, now you can play at full speed because the graphics demands of things like that simulator really aren't that high. I really noticed zero difference. That is a huge, huge bonus. Now, when you do play AAA games on a monitor output, you can absolutely do it. Elden Ring and Modern Warfare 2 and Spider-Man, but you are gonna have some limitations. If you're used to 144 Hertz gaming laptop, I can actually get 70 to 80 FPS if I tweak my settings perfectly for Modern Warfare 2, but for most screens, you're gonna go down to a 60 hertz refresh rate if you hook it up to your TV. So you can actually take advantage when using that HDMI dongles. Now I can go up to a 100 hertz refresh rate and play 100 FPS. This simulator doesn't run quite the speed that we need for practicing drone racing. 60 hertz refresh rate on the monitor that's built in but by outputting that to our hdmi you can then get up to 100 hertz and that's totally flyable so you can get all the practice you need you can play modern warfare 2 you can do so many things with this setup in addition to the regular steam games that you have on there for playing in bed, I use the same high output USB-C that I use on my iPhone charge stand. I just pull the cord out from my phone charger, plug it into the Steam Deck, and depending on your bed layout, a six or nine foot cord is perfect to charge both. That way I don't have a ton of charging accessories on my bedside table. I just need the one cord to be able to charge my iPhone with the little charge stand my AirPods or my Steam Deck. So easy and clutter free. Speaking of AirPods, they pair perfectly with the Steam Deck, unlike my Gen 1 Nintendo Switch that can only use hardwired headphones. What a bummer. I also use my premium Xbox Elite 2 controller for playing games wirelessly when I want to hook this up to a monitor. The lower entry model is only $400. That's the one I recommend most people get because you can easily upgrade the 64 gigabyte storage inside to 512 for only about 55 bucks. Don't pay an extra $200 for the pre-installed 512 gigabyte. Just swap your own in and you'll save yourself 150 bucks off the top right away. If you're into 3D printing, there's a plethora of printed accessories, stands, and mounts that you can cook up. I've printed a few myself, which are quite nice for whenever I'm gaming in the living room. I grew up a gamer, like most of us, and life over the years, hobbies, or it just got in the way. I tried different ways with the Nintendo Switch, which barely had me gaming again, other handhelds, even getting an Alienware gaming laptop. But while all these could play games, having the hardware in your home or even in your hands won't actually get you to play the games. I still remember the almost indescribable joy going to the mall with my dad on my birthday so many years ago and getting this thing, the original Nintendo Game Boy. It seemed quite large to my child hands at the time, but look how portable it seems now, even next to a modern day cell phone. Yes, it is a bit thick, but that's all the rage these days in certain things. And look how close in size it is to a phone. Trying to recapture some of that magic is what prompted me to get the Nintendo Switch a couple of years ago. And while that did allow me to play about 30-ish hours on this fantastic Zelda Breath of the Wild game. After that, it just didn't get used. It collected dust. Then let's not even mention the game selection. The only games you could buy for Nintendo Switch were some premium Nintendo releases like Zelda or Super Smash Brothers. But if you wanted to play any games that a PlayStation or Xbox gamer, what I had been for a very long time, you kind of had to wait till years later. The Witcher 3 came out four or five years later. And instead of being able to buy it on Steam for like $20, you had to pay full $60 to $70 price for a game that's that old for a downgraded graphical version of it. I just couldn't stomach myself to rebuy a lot of the games I already had, and I could never play the games that I really wanted to on it, and it just wasn't comfortable for long periods of time. It is still a fantastic system, and there is some people that are better off with one of these, but for me, 
I'd been searching for a couple of years trying to find a PlayStation 5, not really working my hardest. Yes, I would go to Best Buy every chance I got and look and find that they had none. And there were avenues if you were willing to work hard enough to get one. But part of why I didn't do that extra effort was because I knew for certain that if I got one, it would just sit on the shelf collecting dust the way my Xbox One has been doing for the last couple of years. You know, I still have Xbox One games that I would get for birthdays or Christmas that are still the package that I asked for that I never even got around to opening and that's because as an adult working from home I already spend eight to ten hours in my office where my gaming PC also lives I just don't want to go spend my evening sitting in the same chair I've already sat that long I want to sit in bed and play I want to lie on the couch and play this is what allowed me to do that it also allowed me to play games I had not been able to play Part of the reason I wanted the PlayStation 5 for that long was because I've been wanting to play Spider-Man on PlayStation since the PlayStation 4, but since I didn't have that game on this system, I can do it and play it at pretty much full graphics. The other thing I've been doing is playing a ton of Elden Ring. Now, I'm not much into the gaming world anymore, so when I first got this thing right around Christmas, I asked my nephews, who are some hardcore gamers, what game they would recommend. My nephew Tony immediately said, uh, have you played Elden Ring? Because that's good. And I said, well, no, but I heard it's kind of hard. Is it any good? To which he just scoffed, uh, it won game of the year. So yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. And he wasn't wrong. I've done over 100 hours on it since right around Christmas time, and I never thought I would put 100 hours into a game. I know that this looks big enough to where you could use it as a tiny skateboard, and it feels comically large the first time you see one in person. It is huge. Driving in my car after I picked this thing up used, it was almost the same width as the steering wheel in my car. That's how large it is. You know, I actually like both of these thumbsticks to be on the top like this. The Nintendo Switch tries to copy the Xbox style of controller with this on the bottom, but when you're actually holding and supporting the whole weight of the console, screen, handheld, it's just not ergonomically sound. Works great for a controller, but not great for a handheld, and it puts a lot of extra strain on my wrists and hands. So if you're like me, if you're on the fence, if you're debating on buying yet another console that you're just going to leave sitting there doing nothing, if you're a family guy, or if you have other hobbies, or if you work from home, or don't, and you just want to be able to game and unwind at the same time, man, this thing is a game changer. Yes, I tried using my gaming laptop in the living room sometimes, and that does give you a pinch, but if you have kids or dogs that might knock it over, it just is hard to engage with everyone else in the room when you have a full 17-inch screen open right in front of your face and the TV's behind you. When you're doing this, it's kind of in your lap, right? So you can always look up at the TV. You can laugh when something funny happens on The Bachelor. You know, I might not be into those girly shows, but sometimes there's something funny going on on screen. Like when one of them is boo-hooing about how this is the worst night of their life. Why doesn't he just like me? I don't have an affiliate link for this. I'm not sponsored by this in any way. But it really helped me become a gamer. Something that I thought I would never do again. I thought I had just aged out. I thought that my hobby of drone racing had just taken the place. And if I was going to use any controller, it was going to be one of these behind me to control a drone, which is great and fun. And it's kind of like playing a game, but it gets you out of the house. But you know what? There are hundreds of billions of dollars being spent on the latest video games these days. And to not be able to have the time or the right mechanism to participate then in that media is just a shame. You know, some of these games are so fantastic. Have you seen The Last of Us series? That started off with a game. And the game story is very close to the series story. Without something like this, you won't be able to play those or experience those. And being able to use it on a plane, being able to use it sitting in a hotel, waiting for my next meeting to start, being able to take it when I have to go kill time to run an errand and I just have to sit there and wait, rather than scrolling on the same few Facebook stories of people in your neighborhood complaining about their other neighbors, you could be getting some AAA gaming going on and kill that time in a more productive manner that still lets your mind decompress. That was the thing, though. I would work all day, 
YouTube all night and I was just grinding my brain into mush. I needed a way to unplug a little bit and this was it. The answer has been in front of me my entire life. Playing video games is something that isn't a waste of time. It's a way to recharge your batteries by discharging the batteries in this thing. I don't care what a lot of people say, it's a valuable thing that helps me unplug for a little bit by plugging into this. Who would have thought, guys? Drone racing turns flying drones into a competitive sport. Major League Drone Racing. 